Hi, how's everybody doing? I'm gonna try this again. I made a video earlier about the sports cards, and uh, one of my friends was asking me, email me, and asked me about these boxes. And these these boxes are uh, these are boxes you use to hold your uh, cards, your collection in. One touches, and I got a Beckett bag. So my high end stuff. Sorry, I'm all over. I'm holding this in my hand. So my high end stuff, I put in this. And stuff that's low numbered or something like that that I know that can't be tampered with when I send it to grading card companies, I will go ahead and send those in and get them graded. But if it's not numbered or something that makes the card unique in itself, I don't really trust the process uh, that often. There's been a lot of shady doings going on. Well, anyway, uh, one of my friends over there, uh, uh, he does a uh, he does NFL. Oh, he's doing God's work. He's doing the NFL. And he's exposing these games being rigged and, and scripted way back from the 90s to present time, unfortunately. And, uh, man, I love sports. I played sports all my life. Um, I played football. Matter of fact, uh, Chad and I were on the same team in, at Silver Sands, and I also played Campbell. But I ran track. I played volleyball even, and I played tennis, and I realized that, you know, at a later age, when I was around 17, that I was really good at playing tennis. Um, the first time I ever picked the tennis racket up, I was uh, playing against a teacher that was teaching tennis to us, and uh, after school we played, and I, and I beat him pretty badly. It was like 6'1 to 6'2, and... Um, I have a, a, a really, my eye and hand coordination is very quick, even at my age right now, but not as quick as it used to be, but I'm thinking about training again and getting back into that, but at the end of the day, when I used to play tennis, and we played against guys and ladies, they, the ladies, I don't really see them do that often, as guys do, it's called tanking a match, and that's when you let the other opponent, uh, you know, win, you, uh, you just uh, give up, you quit, or whatever. And uh, I've seen a lot in tennis. It happens in golf, too. Because uh, when they're teeing off, pros are teeing off and they're in a the zone like that, uh, any pro can be any pro at any given day. There is a disadvantage of women and men in tennis when it comes to the top five players in the world. It's just that the return of serve is uh, huge on the guy's side, and so is the uh, big the serve. And um, it's just hard to... We turn serves that are going over 130 miles an hour with uh, your wrist the way they're made. You know, guys have a thicker wrist, and um, I think that's what basically makes a difference when you're hitting a tennis ball. Um, you have to have your timing, obviously. Everything's timing in tennis. Everything. It's how you how you line up, how you approach the game. But tennis is one uh, one and loss on mental errors. You beat yourself. I mean, there are occasions where you can play the best you've ever played in your life and you're just playing a better player. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to disrupt their style of play and make it to where you win. So, um, it's still on you, you know. So, these are some of my cards. I got a mass collection, you can see. This is just one box. I'm scanning them. And then I'll go over some key cards that I like and I've had for a long time. This is one of my favorite cards. Yogi Bear. It's autographed from 2000 I think right before he passed away God bless his soul and this is numbered yep 2000 it was when they won the World Series I believe uh, no he went into the their World Series I mean their Hall of Fame World Series Yankees in every team have some type of uh, um, part in their in their park where you can go visit the old time players and they're uh, they're legendary and they're it's their version of the Hall of Fame for that team you know so I think he was inducted into that because he was already in the Hall of Fame he's the only catcher in the history of baseball ever to win back-to-back -back MVPs in the World Series so not only can this man coach the game of bas uh, baseball he could play the game of baseball at a very high level and Yogi Bear is one of the under you know underrated collectors and then you know this 1970 uh, this is really nice it's got three of the greatest players ever, you know, ever to play the game of baseball. Mr. Hank Aaron, obviously, and Willie Mays, and Babe Ruth. And uh, growing up, everybody, you know, I don't care. Uh, 
I was, grew up in an era where people still talked about Babe Ruth and how great he was and stuff. And then obviously as I got older, I was watching baseball a lot and, uh, you know, checking out other players and stuff. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite players is uh, Barry Bonds. Um, not just because he played for the Pirates, but he is fun to watch. Uh, everybody's talking about steroids. Well, the pitchers were on steroids also. So the whole league back then was rigged, and, and, and we don't even know what these dudes are doing now. So there's some pretty big people in, in baseball. So, And, uh, you know, even if you take away 100 home runs from him, he'd be the only player in history of, uh, you know, uh, of Major League Baseball to have over 600 uh, home runs and 600 stolen bases. So, and he's not too far in hitting behind uh, Tony Gwynn and Mr. Jimmy Fox. And guys like that. So the man can hit. And he's the most walked player in the history of the game, I believe. And uh, you know, I think he's I think he's also the guy that most has the most strikeouts too. So um Barry Bonds had a bad taste in his mouth, uh, because the way the major league baseball treated his father, Bobby Bonds, which was an alcoholic, and he was trying to get help and at the time and trying to sort his life out. And they made it very difficult for him. So he uh, always looked at that probably as a kid and be like, those are bad, those bastards. When I get older, I'm going to break every major league record there is. And he did it, basically, you know. And never got credit for it. And then, of course, you know, being from California, they have different attitudes on stuff. So when his friend gets popped for whatever they get did for the steroid thing and all that, you know, I don't know what kind of relationship that guy has with his friend like that. You know, I don't know. I just know that he's not the only person, and if you're really going to put Barry Bonds down, you got to really look at the whole entire professional sporting uh, league. It's all rigged. Tom Brady's a six-time or seven-time Super Bowl champ, and his father is worth $3.1 billion. $85 million would stop homelessness in America, and this dude is worth $3.1 billion. Take that in for a minute. That gets you a starting job in the NFL, and that gets you eight Super Bowl championships because he is going to win number eight next year. You can mark, you can write it down. <clears throat> but this is what I'm saying. If you want to collect stuff, you want to collect stuff that is rare. Like this card right here. This is a 2020 uh, Optic Prism. Okay, it's Optic Prism. They're going for about 40 bucks right now. They're really short in the market on this card. Okay, it's 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 a it's a short print. There's a prison there, and and these are what you want to get if you're gonna collect modern stuff. Don't get this garbage paper stuff. It's all overproduced. Don't even buy. You can buy one of the regular ones, but you want to get prisms and hold on to them. These forty dollar cards were gonna turn into a thousand dollars when he retires and goes to the Hall of Fame or more if you get them graded. You know. And then when I was telling you about getting things ready, they can switch your damn cards out. They do it. I don't care what everybody says. They'll take tens, give them to the higher, higher people that use their markets. They're in the auction business now, PSA. They're doing auctions with uh, Goldstein. They own the damn company. Okay, so wake up, folks. Anyway, if you are going to send stuff in, this stuff right here that's numbered, short print numbered stuff, it's number 35. You know the number on it, 21. You send that in. And don't care if it comes back at 8 or 9, it's still only 35 of these things made in the world. Don't short don't short yourself, but let's say it comes back at 10. This car will be worth a, th a few G. It might be even $1,000 right now if you was to get a PSA 10 in this thing. There's only 35 of them made. Then you got the orange version, which is badass too. But this is the stuff, you don't want this fucking common stuff. I keep saying it over and over and over. They mass produce it in this shit, bro. You can buy Pokemon cards at the Circle K, okay? And that is rarer than this shit. And uh, even with them selling them at the Circle K. Um, thing about it is, numbered card, you send that card in, it's 36 out of 199. Bang, 36 out of 199 should come back to you, you know? Then you have these other ones. These are cool, too. The blue ones are Carolina blue. No, I think the other ones, I'll show you the difference. I got two of these cards are... Pretty cool. If you, these are number two, 179, and I get 60. And then this other one right here is uh, the same card, I believe. Same kind. Nope. 
a different variation. This is number 299. So there's less than 300 of these made, okay? And that's the blue. That's the aqua blue. See the difference? I'll show you in a second. Let me put it like that. Where's the other one here? Just a slight difference in color. You can see it. Just a little purple. That's considered a Carolina blue right here. The one to the left. And then this one here is just the blue one. And I have another one here, which is $2.99 also, I believe. Come on, buddy. There you go. $2.99. So this is $2.15 out of $2.99. Same kind of, same card, you know. The aqua blue one, the, the navy blue ones are numbered a little bit lower, I believe. No, they're not. I apologize. This is, uh, these are numbered to, uh, these are the same kind. I apologize. See, man, even blending in like that, you can see the difference. This is different. Uh, this is the one number to 179. As I was saying, it's kind of purple. See the difference. And when you're higher down there, plus, uh, I ain't going to make excuses. That's badass. Anywho, and then we, like I say, you got the variations of this stuff. And if you, you know, like the first optic this dude was in, even though that's a common optic, uh, 2016 common optic is still a, his first appearance and stuff. That's the kind of shit you want to get, dude. You want to get stuff like this. I mean, it's it's the he's his first appearance ever on an optic in 2016. I think they might have won the. They had a good rat. Something was up with them. They were doing great. But anyway, you can get the prism version of this also, and that's like three hundred dollars. But it makes it's going to go down in value. Last time I saw it, it was like in the three hundred ungraded, and then somebody was selling it uh, PSA ten for like a G. But you'll see the prism sign in the back here. You see what I mean? But this is not one. This is just a standard one. You'll see the difference. This is a prism. Okay. See how shiny it is. How much, and if it was just a regular one, it'd still be silver, but it wouldn't be shiny. See what I mean? See the difference? When you put them together, dude. Because people will try to tell you that that's an optic. It's not. It is an optic. See, it says optic, but it's not an optic prism. And, it, you know, don't get mad at people if they don't know. Because they're just, some of them aren't trying to grift you. They just see the optic thing. This has an optic on it also. See that? Did you see how shiny it is? And that's just one. I have a few of these different ones. And this is on the back. It'll have it. See? Somewhere on this card will have a prism logo. On this particular one, it's on the left hand side. Or if you look at the card this way, it's on the right. But if you put it sideways as it's supposed to be, it will be on the left. And I put all my cards in one touches as soon as I pull them. You know? So these have been in one touch. And here's a prime example, okay? Look, uh, similar. Here you go. This is a similar... This is a regular one, second year of him in optics, right? It's not got no prism signs or anything like that. I put base on there so people will know. And then uh, it would be shiny. But if you was to put this card, which is similar in the same style, same 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 line it came out of, I had to pull this and that. Damn, huh? Yeah, I'm good like that, yo. Anyway, goes right in a one touch. That's how I do business. And then anybody that watches my videos sees that I never touch these cards um, when they're out of the pla I, I always wear gloves. So, and this I'll have a prism on it. You'll have it right on there. See it in the tiny, tiny, tiny place. Pretty cool. These are what they look like. They're silver. They shine. They're real shiny. And that's got plastic on it, yo. So, uh, they yeah, got two of those. And then, you know, go after rookie cards, dude. Try to get some that doesn't, and then work your way up to bigger ones. Try to get his rookie cards. You get the gold one and that's a G. Okay? Even right now, with the way he's playing. And he's still playing, keep in mind. And his cards are like that. And look to make sure they're not fucking fake, too, because these dicks won't make fake cards, bro. And you'll see by the press pass, it'll be all, it'll be like a, a printer type shit on it. If uh, you guys ever have questions on stuff, don't ever buy shit if you're not sure hit me up and i'll let you give you my opinion on it but when it comes to some things if you don't know about shit like this i would personally just get the shit graded by it graded and then you can get it on your phone and download an app called psa uh app and it tells you um you know it what you put the registration number in it when you're gonna buy the card say for instance you're gonna buy this card right here it's a prism 
and it says uh, it's PSA 10. Well, on the PSA label, there'll be a number on the front here, and then there'll be a number on the back. And that number you would put into your phone on that app, and it'll tell you if it's straight and if what card it is and when it was graded and, and, uh, and you know, that type of stuff. So you want to make sure the shit, not only when you're buying stuff, that the shit that you're buying, even though it has a PSA label on it, it still could be a fake. So verify your, your I mean, on any big type of uh, um, cards that are getting uh, graded. Like, dude, if you get, like, let's say I get this graded, the Wilt Chamberlain that I got. Uh, let's say I get it graded. It gets come back at a PSA 5 or 4, something like that. Maybe a 7, I don't know. It's not in terrific condition, but it's mine. And, and anyway, the fact of the matter is this. That car would be like in the five thousand, six thousand dollar range of today's money. And then the same with this Wayne Gretzky, it'd be a few grand probably. You know, get it graded and stuff, because it's been caught, you know, they cut it with wire or some shit back in the day. Anyway, this is the you know the Austin Matthews are straight because uh you know, it's really hard to duplicate a young gun car. It's made particularly in a style where it's just engraved. And that's what makes them so cool, and that's what makes them so expensive. I have uh, I have this one. I have Connor McDavid, the actual uh, 201, that card. That has to be graded, but I have one that is graded. And uh, it looks like similar to this, the Austin Matthews, and they're expensive. And then, of course, I got Austin, because I collect certain guys, even though it's rigged and fixed now that I know from Path Tutner, he was telling me, and uh, showing videos on it. So, I'll be getting rid of a lot of stuff, you know. Just breaks my heart that this shit's scripted and rigged like this, and it just ain't right, man. But if you're going to collect, you're going to go after Tom Brady. I wouldn't really focus on LeBron too much. Tom is a, in a whole different ball game as far as being connected financially and uh, image and everything. And uh, and I think, uh, I think Patrick Mahomes is a duck. You know, he's just out there to give you a little hope that there's going to be other, you know, but he may or may not win another Super Bowl in the next few years, but he is going to win a Super Bowl, another Super Bowl. And then I don't know what the, how they're going to script it after that, you know, but I know the Cowboys are winning this year. And then, you know, like I say, there's other cards too in them series. I just like the way they, they make them and stuff. And the end, uh, I'm pretty good at picking the players. I always pick the players that I think are going to be good and put them in one touches, but I have binders of 201s, literally, uh, from collecting and I have the sets of uh, the upper deck. And then, if you're going to go after modern stuff, like with Mike Trout, here's a prime example. These refractors, you want to get stuff like this, okay? See how that, that's just not the, that's not just the, uh, the, the, the card, it's an actual refractor. And uh, it's really cool, man. See how it says Prism right underneath the M4? The other version wouldn't have that. So these are, this is a short print version of this, and it's purple. It's really cool if you see it in person. The same with this. This Don Ross. You gotta change the plastic on it, but this is a Don Ross. It's cracked ice. This is a Prism. You know what I mean? And you're 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 gonna you're not. This is short print, okay? It's not mass produced, same with stuff like this. Everything I pull out of my cards and buy like this, I uh, always put them in one touches. Because these are refractors and there's a shorter print cards of the whole entire series. They're hard to hard to get. They made people put one in one of these kind of cards in, in this type of shit in every four cases or something, you know? That variation of it. And then you the same with this. This is so beautiful, man. It's badass. I know this is fake and, and, and all that crap too. But, you know, they did do a good, did a good job making sports cards and making them look cool and shit. Because when I was growing up, it was just an ugly ass off-centered uh, cards and people would collect them and stuff. But there's your prism on there. And they will be up in value. The Angels are probably going to win the World, World Series in the next two years. Uh, it's my prediction. It's coming soon. Uh, unfortunately, I think, you know, how that works out is they have to sacrifice people. And I, and I don't want to see one of my favorite players, which I'm probably going to think that that's the guy that's going to go for them to do a tribute on him. And that would be NR. And uh, I loved watching him pitch. He was one of the greatest of all time. And I hope that that doesn't happen. But 
that normally what happens when these Jesuits do plans, they'll sacrifice somebody huge and then, um, you know, then um, they'll win. You know, the year that they, the Dodgers won the World Series, Don Newcomb died, you know? He was 94, I know that, but... And then, you know, God bless Hank Aaron, he dies, and, and the Braves won the World Series. It's very suspicious, to say the least. Anyway, and then, you know, like I was saying about the different variations of 201s, this is Alexa LeFerrier 201, I won that one. That's pretty cool. First, when they first come out, that's when you go after these boxes if you're trying to pull 201s. The first print, and the first run, and I got two... I had tons of Austin Matthews, but I only have two left and one that's graded a PSA 10. So I have three. And I got some pretty cool autographs of Austin. We had two autographs, one on a puck, which is around here somewhere. Uh, oh, here it is. I like this. This is pretty cool. This is 2016 uh, Upper Deck Trilogy Hockey. And this is his rookie season, and he signed it. And it's limited edition, so in this very undervalued, it's like people are selling it for like four or five hundred, and it's probably worth about three or four thousand. It's very difficult to pull those cards, and he's still he's one of the best rookies of that class, along with uh, you know Matthew Brazil and uh, Patrick Lane, and uh, there's a few good guys, but he stands out amongst the best of them right now. Him and Connor McDavid are in a class of their own, and Sid Crosby obviously is the greatest of my era besides Wayne Gretzky and Mario Lemieux, but Sid Crosby is pretty amazing. And there's my man Barry Bonds with the auto on his rookie. It's a good dude. And then we got my man Derek Jeter. His auto on that one. It's a gold upper deck one. I had a few other autos. I sold them to my friend he was a Yankees fan. He sent them in PSA. I have JSA on them, but he sent them in the PSA and got them graded. And then I got the certificate for this one, the JSA one. So this can't all that on there. Yeah, dude. And then very, you know, like I, I collected, I got a couple Kobe's that are graded. And I got some, some really cool Kobe Bryant rookie cards. These are going for pretty big money right now. Graded and ungraded. And then the metal, you know. Flare metal is pretty cool. I got variation of flare metal. That one too. It's pretty cool. And then this is the rare one. It's very rare. This is the Topps Gold. It's Topps Gold rookie uh, Kobe Bryant. It's very badass. See the gold on there? On the tops. You can see it. Oh, it's gold right there. The very the other variations aren't gold. A lot of people don't know what they're doing out there. They're just trading. They're selling it and. Even some of the car companies aren't even labeling it right. There's variations. The other one is in gold, it's silver. So, yeah, and they didn't make many of them. Nobody really knew. I mean, they had an idea. I kind of knew as soon as I watched them play, because I watched Vince, uh, Vince Carter play. He lived in Daytona around us. So we watched the kid play in basketball, and it was, like, amazing what this kid was doing. Uh, it was embarrassing for the other teams, believe me. That's the Crosby autographed rookie card. See, this ain't very expensive to pick up. Well, it wasn't for me or whatever, because I'll find them on the internet, but uh, on eBay. But this is rookie auto, dude. On card, too. It's not a sticker. Or maybe it is a sticker. It's hard to say. Yeah, it's a sticker. It's a Crosby, but, you know, Sid's got three Stanley Cups or more, I think. I think three. At least three, so he may get another one before it's all, all said and done. You never know. But at this time, this is what I do. Since I got, I organize all my cars that I believe to be high end. Like Kershaw, he's good, but it's not super high end or anything like that. It's not super rare. It is numbered though. Both these are numbered, I believe. This is actually numbered to 99, 5 of 99. There's 5 of 99. Kershaw. This is. Rookie Auto fa Fabric Patch. Same with this is a ticket card. I think this is a short number too. This is numbered to 10. So this is really short. It's only 10 of these made in the world. And it's a, it's a, it's a ticket card. 
It's got a piece of patch, the ticket piece, and, uh, you know, his autograph on there. Pretty cool. So, I appreciate everybody watching. This is what I do. And, uh, you know, with well, my collection, I'll put them in there. So, this thing holds about, I'd say about 60 cards. 50 to 60 cards. Because I counted all my Brady stuff and it was 30. No, maybe more than that. I'm sorry. Let's see what, well, let's do this real quick. Because one of my friends was asking me how many cards this thing holds up. I mean, can do uh, with one touches. So I have like 30 Tom Brady cards. Keep all my optics together. And there's our guys that be different. So, yeah, I'll put all my stuff in this box. And then I have my, I have my, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, the bag, my Beckett bag and put them in there. But I have 30 optics. I mean, 30 Tom Brady cards, I'm pretty sure, all together. So I just do my stuff like that. Put all my players that I'm really gonna stash away, so to speak, and not touch or sell or anything. Put them away. And then uh, later on, when uh, these guys go in the Hall of Fame and stuff, or whatever, when it gets to a reasonable price, and I can safely get things graded without people trying to skyjack me and steal my shit, uh, or try to switch my card out with a reprint or something, which I've had that happen to me. Um, I'm not gonna throw anybody under the bus, but a couple companies, and I had my friends to prove it, because I sent their cards in too with it. But yeah, all the Brady stuff, and all the things like that, Try to keep them in there all together. The second year card, obviously, and then goes on to the next big player that I think you know. Or my autographs that separate differently, but yeah, the other stuff I'll sell to buy other things. You know, maybe fish and pole, or maybe invest more in the things that I know that aren't going to go in value, like this stuff. This is pretty solid, man. I've never seen it not lose money with a guy like this, and there's just too much involved with this guy. He's not a normal, it's not a normal situation at all. But his his stuff is very, it's gonna be very expensive in the future. Out of all the stuff, Mahomes is a gamble, dude. They throw a bone in there every time. You know, I've seen a lot of quarterbacks win Super Bowls and never win another one again. Jay Schrader, horrible quarterback, won a Super Bowl with the Redskins because they. Theismann went down or whatever, and then, uh, <clears throat> you know, you had the, you had the Giants go with Hostetler, and they won with Phil Simms, two, you know, a below average, in my opinion, quarterbacks, and they're in the Hall of Fame because they're, they can keep secrets, you know, and they're good at talking to people about stuff, so, it's all, it's all family, I mean, you can see the bloodline in, the, in, these, in these sports. You've got guys in baseball that have four generations of the same family in that baseball. And then you have people, even more than that, really, some of the baseball is really ridiculous. Football is the same way. It's a club. These guys are part of a club. It's a private club for elite, elite people that do serious gambling. And they rig it. It's scripted. And you're like, well, how would they get it? Well, how do they make money? They make money off of you, your energy. Everything you do is consistent, consistent of energy. Money has energy in it. The time it took you to make that dollar had energy in it. And the 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 the, the, the worrisome of no uh, putting pressure on yourself about who or who may not win a game that you're not playing in. So it's yeah, it's all linked together. It's all psychological. And it's a hell of a grift. It's amazing if you sit back and just look at it for what it is and think about how a genius these people are that come up and do this shit. And then you, by looking at it that way, one, you don't get really mad to the point where you will not be able to concentrate and put yourself a game plan together to uh, retaliate within a means of lawful means or just being aware of what they're doing so you also can make money off of what they're doing too. 
and uh, then you'll be able to help your family and stuff. So yeah, so there's like I say I see a good 50 cards, 50 cards could fit in there. So that's how I do this stuff. You know, I got my hockey players. I got Babe Ruth and Babe Ruth again, and the Yankees, obviously. Then I'm gonna put Derek Jeter in there with Barry Bonds and Ken Griffey Jr. That's all together. And then Michael Jordan, obviously. And then you got LeBron James, this stuff here. And then Kobe that way. And then Mr. Wilt Chamberlain, obviously. That's not an auto, that's just regular rookie. These are regular rookies. And then these are autos. And then autos more. And then I go to my National Treasure, which is like that. Some of these cards. And then as I get more into, you know, organizing them and stuff, I'll go through ones that I'm like, okay, well, I'll just get rid of this one to buy a better one. You know, like, like say, for instance, I sold everything in this box and I went after and bought myself an 86 Fleer, you know, and I got just enough after everything I sold in this box to get an authentic one or some that's not completely, uh, you know, um, perfect, so to speak. So, yeah, um, you can do that and then you later on, of course, it wouldn't matter <laughs> uh, if it's authentic, if it's real, people are going to pay more than, than you bought. You know, like you're gonna make a lot of money off. If they just, just don't get attached to this stuff, that's the lesson I've learned. So, uh, because you're investing in some things, now that you know the things is rigged and scripted, you gotta look at it that way. And things that you have high end of may not be high end in the near future, and it may be garbage players. I mean, they may turn out to be complete bust. So we got about 55 in there, and I have another box. So we'll put those in there. These are all my homes. So Mahomes gets his own place. And then I have the, my Beckett bag and another bag, like I said, I put the stuff in. So uh, go out there and check out these channels, Lobo and uh, uh, Pat Toothner. They're, 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 they're dropping true problems, man. They're good people and they're, you know, they're on target. But uh, like I said, I probably could have used Pat yesterday to open up those cans of uh, tomatoes because uh, my hands were hurting because I was making lasagna times and... Uh, that man's got teeth the size of a horse, so I figured, you know, if he was to help with open those cans of tomatoes, my hands wouldn't be so uh, sore right now. But the lasagna turned out good. I was very impressed with myself. I told myself, I said, Self, you did good on making lasagna. And my, myself said, Thank you. As I was eating lasagna and saying my praise to God. Anyway, long video, but it was some things to talk about. Hopefully, got, uh, I can get in the live stream and be able to communicate better with everybody. But until then, Take care.